Okay. So that you believe in Ayn Rand, first and foremost. Oh, certainly. Not necessarily a god or a heaven or a hell or a government or some other people or forces beyond your control, but you believe in you. Uh, I wouldn't put it that way. I could say that, yes, it's true to some extent, but it's very inexact because it isn't a matter of faith. I have confidence in my own rational ability. But more than that, I also know that if I had less abilities than I have, no matter what happened to me, my mind is all that I have to guide me. So that if I were me or the lowest girl in the class, mentally, which I never was, uh, the same morality would apply to me. How smart, you, you brought this up now, that you were not the dumbest girl in the class. No. How, how smart were you in school when you were a little girl? Very. Yeah. I was the top student in, I went to two different schools in two different cities and I was the top student there. In addition to being the top student, did they ever measure your intelligence and tell your mom and dad, oh, this girl is so bright, this girl is a jewel? No, by, in my time they didn't have those tests, not in Russia. But you knew that you were smart? Oh, yes. Um, did you feel that school was too slow, that yes. you were so far ahead of the material? Yes. How did you handle that? How did you school yourself, really, beyond the, the curriculum or curriculum is of the school? Is it of interest to tell you? Yes, it really is. I always tried to sit in the back row of a class, and I put a book in front of me, and I was writing novels from the age of 10. I was writing screenplays at 8. But I was writing novels in class because I was, otherwise I would be terribly bored. I was never discovered because we had textbooks. And if you read ahead uh, of the lesson that they present in class, you could know what the teacher said. Mm -hmm. I had to read the textbook just once, and then I knew the course. So I, I really think it had a bad influence on me, uh, on my working discipline. It was too easy and too boring. How, but how did it affect your working discipline? I, I, I never had to make an effort. I certainly did have to when I began writing novels. That's really difficult. But in school, I had no difficulties. How was writing novels difficult for you? Because it's an enormous context that you have to keep in mind, an enormous structure. You can't do it inspirationally. You can't do it by just looking at the piece of paper once and deciding what you're going to do. It's a whole enormous structure, much more complicated than a building. And you have to keep it all in mind, never contradict your outline, and carry it out. It's killing you, difficult, but wonderful when you succeed at it. Mm -hmm. I mean a good novel, of course. Do you recall what the first novel was you wrote when you were 10 years old, behind that book in the back row in school? The very first one? Uh, I remember the first screenplay. Oh, the novel I never finished. Oh. <laughs> uh, wait a moment. No, I did finish it. Yes, I remember it. The one I didn't finish, I started in college. Uh, I remember it, but don't make me tell you the plot. No, I will not. But I would like to think that somewhere that manuscript is in a drawer in your house or in a box up in a closet. It's probably bombed out of existence oh, really? in Leningrad. So it exists then I, only in your mind, huh? Yeah, yeah. I didn't bring it with me. When did you discover or think up or allow objectivism to become your philosophy? From the time that I remember myself, which is two and a half. The first incident in my life I can remember, I was two and a half. And from that time on to the present, I never changed my convictions. Only. At two and a half, I didn't know as much as I know now, but the fundamental approach was the same. I've never had to change. Why has it worked for you? Because it's true, because it corresponds to reality, because it is the right philosophy.